Hello, everyone. Did you get some coffee after lunch? No? Not yes. yet. <laughs> Not yet? <laughs> I think there's plenty down there, right? Um, so I'm actually playing two roles, uh, just first for a little bit. Brand Live is the sponsor of this session, and uh, I'm also moderating it. Really excited to have the, the caliber panel that we have up here today. But just want to take a quick minute to tell you a little bit about Brand Live and show you a short video about us as well. So Brand Live is a live video commerce platform. Retailers and brands use us to create highly engaging online events where we combine live video, social interaction, and e-commerce. So I'll show you a quick video that uh, hopefully you'll think is entertaining. And introducing for the first time, the first ever, all-in-one, skydiving, hang gliding, backpacking, avalanche-proof, lava-resistant, multi-adventure backpack. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I was just watching our live product launch that we did earlier today. We sold 118 multi-adventure backpacks, got about 850 product reviews, all in about 45 minutes. Not bad. That reminds me, I need to set up the live product training that we're doing later this week. It'll only take a second. And save. I should test this. Start broadcast. And I'm live. And stop. BrandLive lets me train my retailers so that they understand my product, can sell it better, and more consumers buy. Speaking of buying, my anniversary is coming up and I still need to buy a present. It's live now. We just about finished finally chopping up our strawberries for the classic Interesting. recipe of our strawberries. I wonder if you can use large fruit too. And we take our finely chopped strawberries, add them to the Fresh Tech Jam Maker. And it looks like we actually have a live question in from our audience. Jason from Portland wants to know if you can use large fruits as well. Probably uh, things like plums or apples or pears. Great question, Jason, and absolutely yes. Works for me. Uh, Bye now. Now I can get back to doing real work. Meow. <laughs> Brand Live is turnkey web software that combines live video, social interaction, and instant commerce to increase online conversion and product understanding. All right, so that's Brand Live in one quick video. We also have a contest going on today. Um, we are giving away your choice of any one of our customers. You can select a product from them, and that actually includes uh, GoPro, who's up here today. So you can win a free GoPro or a free pair of Levi's, and we'll ship your pants to you. All right, so introducing the topic, we are covering uh, educational and training videos. Um, we had a conference call uh, a couple weeks ago getting prepared for this panel, and one of the things I thought that was really interesting that everybody said was the role that these videos play in the personality of the brand and sort of the authority and the brand positioning within the company and to consumers. It gives the brand an opportunity to either assert their knowledge and communicate something, um, you know, communicate their expertise and position to the consumer, or like we heard about from the guys at salesforce.com this morning, new strategy and new products and new concepts are rolling out all the time inside of our companies, and more and more management is going to the video people in the company and saying, hey, we need a video to communicate this get people on board with this concept as quickly as possible. So that's kind of the general theme. I think um, what's really unique about this category of video products is that it, it actually covers everything from product design, product creation, all the way through to sales. So think about that as each one of our panelists goes through about a 10 to 12 minute presentation. Um, and then afterwards, hopefully a lot of the questions can be driven from you guys, and if not, I've got a list of questions that I think will bring out some really interesting topics. So jot down some notes and uh, we'll get started. Um, we've got an amazing panel here with Advanced Auto Parts, Zappos, and GoPro. Um, very large and respectable companies and so I'd like each person to start off, give an introduction for themselves and move into their presentation. Yeah, yeah. Hey everyone, uh, Austin Blair, I'm with uh, Zappos.com. Uh, so I've been with the company for about three and a half years. Um, 
currently overseeing the creative services department, uh, which does include the AV, AV internal team that we have, um, which creates a lot of the how-tos that I'll talk about today. Um, but, I, but my background starting with the company actually came from uh, the video department itself, which is more of the, the mass production uh, videos, which you guys, if you've been to zappos.com, you've probably seen our product videos. Um, we produce around um, 500 videos a day <laughs> at this point. Um, yeah, with over 250,000 videos that have been created since 2007. I'm sorry, 2009. Okay, great, thank you. Sorry. So just to kick us off, yeah, just a brief history on Zappos. Um, as far as video, how we got started, where we kind of started at, and where we are now. Um, so we started producing um, company culture videos in 2007. Um, that's kind of what we termed them at the time. Um, for Zappos.com, we're solely online, so we don't have a brick and mortar um, presence. Um, also with our value props and our customer service uh, that we pride ourselves on, um, it was kind of hard for a customer to experience that um, customer service, you know, seeing how easy a return was, um, how easy it was to, to call in and speak to a real person 24-7, um, until they actually made a, a purchase. So the way we got started in videos uh, was to kind of get our presence out there pre-purchase um, and just kind of, you know, let our customers know or potential customers know uh, what, what we're about. Um, so we started doing those in 2007, um, solely lived on YouTube, didn't have our own um, player, just a YouTube channel at that point. Um, by 2009 is when we started to ramp up production for our product videos, um, which we've, um, you know, we've spent a lot of emphasis on growing out that, that program. Um, and, the, and the numbers there pale in comparison to our how-tos, but I'm, I'm going to talk about how-tos uh, today. So. We also started our how-to program in 2009. Uh, so why make how-to videos? Um, I think the obvious is uh, you know, engaging and, and teaching your audience. Um, but we really, really found that it was, it's a great medium uh, to show your company culture, give your company personality. Um, a web page, a picture, text, you know, that's one thing. But being able to have representatives from your company and employees, you know, uh, teach potential customers or, you know, just share information um, and to just give, just give a, a depiction of the company culture, uh, which we really pride ourselves on. It's an excellent medium to, to do that. Um, and also, you know, can help the customer make a better purchasing decision uh, depending on what types of how-to videos you use, which, which I have multiple examples you'll see of, um, ways that we've used them, not just to, to hard sell, um, which actually we, we never really want to hard sell. I mean, the how-to video, the, it really is about education uh, and just kind of building that relationship there. So I wanted to, to touch on this. This is something that um, we've been in, been kind of uh, interested in for a long time at, at Zappos is kind of this theory of uh, reciprocity. So for those of you who don't know what that is, it's uh, social psychology that refers to responding to a positive action with another positive action. Uh, so rewarding kind actions. Um, and viewing, well I guess, in, in educating your customers or showing them something that they didn't know or you know, they're interested in something and you're able to help them, um, that's a kind action, right? And I think you're able to build more trust and potentially uh, have them come back to you as a lifelong customer if you are teaching them um, and, and being very, very helpful. So people like it when you help. Smiley face. Uh, so I have an example here of one of our um, how-to videos. Super simple. This is shot. Um, Brooke, she's actually in our uh, the production side of, of video. So um, you can probably go on site and find thousands of shoes that she's talked about. Um, but this one was interesting. It's kind of an outlier. It's one of the, the higher views uh, that some of our how-tos have on, on our YouTube channel. And we don't push, push any of this. None, none of it is paid, paid traffic. It's all organic, um, which you can see it's averaging about 125,000 views a year, which, you know, isn't crazy. It's not Gangnam style or anything, but, um, you know, it's, it's pretty decent. 
Um, so this was super simple, you know. Um, yeah, you'll see. I'll talk about it after I play. Hey, what's up? I'm Brooke, and I'm going to show you how to tie a runner's knot. There's three different ways that I know about. The first is a loop, swoop, and pull. First, you're going to take your shoe, place it in front of you or on your foot. Take the two strings, cross them over. You're going to tuck it under, pull it nice and tight. Make one loop here. Take the other one, take a swoop around, push it under with this little finger here, where you'll find another loop, and pull it tight. Loop, swoop, and pull. Number two, good old bunny ears. The second one is bunny ears, and I've never been too great at it. You take your strings, you're gonna make sure that they're nice and tight by tucking it under once. You're gonna make one bunny ear on this side, another bunny ear on this side, cross them over, tuck one underneath, pull it through, and you're ready to go. Number three, magic fingers. Ooh. This one's brand new to my shoe tying game. First you take it, you cross it over just like you have before, nice and snug. Then you're gonna take both hands like this. You're gonna put two fingers in front of this lace and two fingers in back of this lace. Pull them frontwards, pinch each other, and pull it out. So easy and magical. <laughs> now you can show all of your friends your brand new skills at tying your shoes. Pretty sweet, huh? See ya. So, by the way, when Brooke uh, approached me a couple years ago to produce this, I had no idea there was more than one way to tie your shoe. Um, yeah, pretty mind blown. And apparently, I, the way I tie my shoe is completely different from any of these three methods. I, I don't, I don't know. She says I have the weirdest way of tying my shoe. Um, but yeah, so you see, like it, it's super simple. Um, and you know, I don't know, I don't know if, if you guys are like me, but you may have just learned, you know, two different ways to tie your shoe that you didn't know before. Um, and the other thing I wanted to touch on too, like the way that we're engaging with our audience. So. Obviously, Zappos sell shoes, apparel, handbags, everything. Um, but if you notice, like we didn't try to sell shoes there on, on the how-to. Like it really is just teaching someone to tie a shoe. Uh, most adults know how to tie their shoes, so um, it's probably adults logging on with their their children, you know, to maybe teach them. Um, and I don't know if you guys like I can remember who taught me how to tie my shoe, you know. So maybe there are kids that have learned how to tie their shoe through this video, and they'll remember. Oh, I remember the Zappos video that that taught me how to tie shoes. Um, which is really like a qualitative thing, like uh, that's very hard to measure. Um, but you know, we, we have um, you know just just our beliefs that that this definitely helps. Um, and two, like you know, like we have advanced auto parts. Like you wouldn't see Brooke telling you how to change a muffler or a spark plug or something like that. Like we're not experts in that. Like we, that's probably the last person you would want to to teach you about how to do anything with a car. Um, but we do know footwear. You know, we do know handbags. We do know apparel. Um, so we definitely keep our how-tos, you know, within our area of expertise. Um, and again, too, just to touch on like the way that we measure the success of how-tos, like a lot of these, um, a lot of the, the videos that we have, they're like, um, they're of like vendors that will maybe come in. Um, they're shot super fast. Like we do script things out and we do try to get, you know, as much um, heads up. But like I mentioned, like that video was shot, um, in like 30 minutes, like I think she just had some downtime and wanted to do it. Um, so they don't have to be any, you know, huge productions or anything. I guess depending on the subject. Um, yeah. So I wanted to outline kind of some of the other uses that, that we've done for how to. So it's not just around like product. Um, some of these are. So I mentioned vendors speaking about broad categories. Um, so what I meant by this was, um, I remember a few years ago we had a rep, a rep come in from uh, Justin Cowboy Boots, and uh, there are certain things that you look for as you're being uh, fitted for a cowboy boot or as you're looking for a cowboy boot. Um, so we had the rep sit down and talk about, you know, very generically, not pushing Justin Cowboy Boots, um, just talking about cowboy boots, like what do you need to look for uh, in a fit, you know, like a certain uh, pop that the heel makes as you pull the boot on. Um, you know, most cowboy boots, uh, you go by your tennis shoe size, but you subtract a half, you know, so if you're a 10, you'd get a nine and a half in cowboy boots. Um, and we actually linked this how-to to all of the product videos that, or all of the products um, that pertain to that cowboy boot. Um, so, 
you know, you're able to kind of like supplement there. You know, it's not just text and then the, the video about that product, but it's actually a video talking about the broad category of how your cowboy boots should fit. Um, also, like how to, how to apply makeup. Um, there's another one that we have, like uh, how to curl your hair, you know, and those are reps using products that we carry, but it's also a very broad uh, statement. So you may not purchase that exact curling iron that's used in the video, um, but you will know how to use other curling irons. Um, entertainment, uh, these are pretty funny. Again, these are just kind of made, uh, the, the AV team, these are, these are culture related videos that we like to call them. Um, we'll push them through social channels, blogs. Um, but we create how to's around like how to accept a bad gift, you know, with Q4 coming up, uh, holidays. Uh, they're just really, really funny things. Um, the one that, that came to mind, a guy gets a, uh, a little panda hat and <laughs> it's really funny. Um, and then how to scare your friends. So we, we pushed that during like Halloween last year. Um, how to scare your friends and it was actually like uh, the AV team that I mentioned kind of scaring some folks around the office, you know, kind of office pranks, stuff like that. Um, just a cool way for, again, people, people to kind of engage with our brand. Um, internal communication and recruiting. Um, so we actually, a few months ago, just had this really awesome expense reporting software uh, change. Um, and so we, we created how-to videos there that we were using internally, you know, to, to train everyone up as well as classes. And um, actually, I could probably use a refresher on that. Um, and how to make your resume stand out. Recruiting um, actually made a video um, with Zappos. We highly encourage applicants to create video cover letters. Um, so we actually made a how-to video on how to create a, a video cover letter and also a how-to video on things that you can do to make your resume stand out. Um, and again, too, like it doesn't, that doesn't just apply to Zappos, like that applies if you're searching for any job, like, you know, you're hearing from our recruiting uh, department on things that they look for that, um, you know, maybe you're not applying at Zappos, but maybe you're applying somewhere else and you're, you know, searching for a video that, that shows you in, hey, it's Zappos. Um, and then also help customers navigate your site. Um, we've used this, we actually just updated um, how to return an item. Um, so we obviously have a, a, very, um, a very easy to use return policy. Um, so a lot of customers, you know, we encourage people to order two sizes of a shoe um, if you're not certain. Um, so we get a lot of returns and um, you know, hopefully making that, that process easy. You know, they can log on, watch a video of it, see exactly how it's done. Um, you know, and it may, may save some time. And that is all I have. Thank you, guys. Hi, I'm Val DuVernay with Advance Auto Parts, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our, uh, our strategy here. Um, there we are, increasing skills and increasing sales. So just a little bit about Advance Auto Parts. Um, we are a Fortune 500 company, about 82 years old now. We've got about 3,900 stores in 39 states, primarily um, east of the Rockies. Uh, about 55,000 employees, uh, but we've only been doing e-commerce for four years now. So it, uh, as an older kind of hardline company, uh, they hadn't really thought about e-commerce uh, until recently, and so very glad to have been part of bringing that into the fold at the company. We do both B2C, uh, which we refer to as DIY or do-it-yourself, and B2B, which is DIFM or do it for me. Um, so that means we're selling both to everyday people who want to do their own work on their car as well as mechanics and uh, dealers, fleets and so forth. And we have certainly different approaches for each of them. Um, so uh, just an overview on our program, we, um, we only have about 500 videos. So um, what Zappos does in a day is all that we have. Um, about 80% of those are for the DIY market and about 20% are for the DIFM. Um, we do use Live Clicker as our video platform um, and um, 
our breakdown on videos is that about uh, 70, 71 percent of our videos are how-to. And I wanted to just kind of talk about the different kinds of how-to videos that we do as well. So, um, you know, there are the, the product-based how-tos that are uh, generally um, acquired from our vendors. So, particularly in some of the um, what we term as front room or more retail oriented products. So the um, car washes, the wash and wax, um, the, uh, does everybody here know how to put their own windshield wiper fluid in? Yeah, for the most part, great. Okay, who knows how to put their own alternator in? Mm, not so much, okay. So the, um, we, we also find that the front room guys, the, uh, the wash and wax, the windshield wiper people, they produce their own videos. It's, it's much more of a CPG type of item. They're selling it in a lot of different channels. They're doing a lot more advertising, so they're already used to producing those. So we go ahead and we acquire those from them, put them on our platform, use those on product detail pages. It's very easy to kind of move through those. Um, consumers are, are used to seeing them. They're familiar with those brands, so it's, it's an easier way, uh, um, more of a cost-effective way for us to do those kinds of how-tos. Then we have what we term our advanced how-tos, and that's uh, both because that's the name of our company and also because they are more advanced. These are how-tos that we're producing ourselves that are really more about hard parts, so about brakes and alternators and starters. Um, we do some lighter fare, and we also do some more general knowledge, like how to change your oil or how to fix a flat tire or change a flat tire, I should say. So these are a little bit more involved. Um, we want to be known as kind of that uh, friendly, knowledgeable source um, of information uh, because we also uh, use these videos as I'll get into to kind of move people not only through a sales process but through a, a life cycle with the company. And then we also have the DIFM service demos. So um, uh, besides selling parts uh, to um, mechanics and shops, we also have some services that are more software services to help them run their businesses. Um, and so we put together kind of software demos on those. So it's a, a whole different kind of how-to, but it's something that we're also doing. Um, and then there's the product description videos. So these are not how-tos, but these are more of your, your basic, um, you know, again, oftentimes vendor acquired that are just uh, very succinctly describing the product so that somebody can say, yep, that is in fact what I want. Uh, and then our community and PR. So all of these types of videos get uh, put through our platform. Um, but as you can see, the how-to videos are really the, uh, the large part. And um, the DIFM training, this is actually a product that we're selling. We're partnering with another <coughs> company right now who is producing these videos. And these are more hardcore actual training videos. So to um, what Fritz was talking about, you know, there's really a wide range of types of videos. Um, and these training videos are to actually help the mechanics to train them on what they need to do. So what, um, what are our how-to videos all about? What's our strategy? It's really these three things, to inform the purchase, so to help people understand what it is that we're selling, what it is they need to buy and use, to increase their confidence. So um, you know, we don't want customers who are only buying windshield wiper fluid from us because they know how to do that, right? We want to move them through the, uh, the process of doing their own work, build customers who are more confident and able to come back and buy more and more from us. Um, you know, uh, I'd love to be able to say that the, uh, the guy or gal who started out with us just uh, changing windshield wiper fluid or wiper blades or headlight bulbs, all of which are things that I myself know how to do now, and I didn't before I started with the company. Um, they're the ones that we want to move through to, you know, perhaps certainly being able to do um, replacing their own battery, uh, perhaps getting into brakes, perhaps the starters and alternators, spark plugs, and, you know, one day replacing their engine. Who knows, right? So these are all things we sell, so we'd love to have the customers start here and go all the way through and be able to do all of this with us. 
Um, and then just to inspire learning, you know, certainly there's a sense of pride in being able to do these things yourself. You know, I mean, we see um, other consumer-oriented companies who are using video a lot or who are doing more <coughs> broadcast advertising like um, Home Depot and so forth, you know, it's a lot about, hey, I can do this as, as this program was titled and I know how to do this, I feel pride in doing this, I can show this off. So um, that's the other thing that we wanna do. So here you see just a couple of examples. Um, checking brake fluid, you know, it's one of the easiest things to do. We have this kind of difficulty scale that we use on our videos, so how many wrenches, you know, how much knowledge do you have to have to be able to do this? This is one of the ways that we move people through that chain. So checking brake fluid, one wrench, replacing spark plugs, hey, that's only two wrenches. You know, somebody might not think that replacing spark plugs was necessarily an easy thing to do, but yet if they know, hey, I can do this, oh, I thought replacing spark plugs would be a four wrench job, you know, it's like, no, it's really not that hard, you just need to know what to do. So um, our difficulty rating does go up to four wrenches, um, but, you know, we keep most of our information down at the lower end. So what's the, uh, the life cycle on videos and how we view it? So we really look at, at that sales cycle. So the pre-sale where we're trying to give tips on uh, generally what a, a job or use of a product might be about. Um, you know, show the scale, uh, what's involved, and we really want to keep those uh, pre-sale videos um, kind of short just to give them a sense of what it is that the uh, replacement job might be about. And we're trying to give them the product information and why they might need to do this job as well. Um, then in supporting the sale, we're trying to confirm that need for them. So again, um, very product specific, what you need, and then um, also demonstrate quality in the parts because of course we're not just trying to teach somebody how to do it, but we want them to know how to do it and then buy from us. So we we'll also talk about the quality of, of what we're selling oftentimes in these. Um, so it's very product specific and what they need to do the job. And then post sale. So we're explaining more details, a lot of hands on, how do you actually um, complete the job. And often these are longer in length. So, um, you know, as somebody's coming in to buy, they just want to know, am I really going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to accomplish this when I see it being done? And then once they actually get it, they get the part home or they receive it from shipping, then sometimes uh, on some of our items, like our brakes, for example, we'll have a QR code on the box and they can take a look at a video right while they're looking at the part that shows them what they need to do and how to do it. So um, when you're making how-to uh, videos, these generally can be longer, um, particularly when you're in more of a technical, I, I don't think we want to spend 20 minutes learning how to tie shoes, although it took a lot of us longer than that. Um, but our videos, our longest one is about 20 minutes. Um, we do try to keep them about three to five minutes just in terms of retaining uh, the interest and the viewership. However, as we get into more difficult and technical uh, jobs, they do get longer. Um, and as a contrast, our product videos are generally less than a minute. So you do have time to spend with the user, make sure that they feel that they're actually getting something from it and actually learning something from it. We do script um, all of our how-tos. Um, again, as a more technical product, it's important to get all of those different points in. Um, I like to kind of overshoot a little bit so that we can get alternate angles and when you see one of our videos, you know, we try to actually get people in there to the part, so, uh, and then we edit, right? I mean, it's all about the edit, particularly on, on these types of products. We always call out what's required of them so that they really can get the uh, entire scope of the job. And we like to tell them again at the end, you know, what did you just see? What is it that you need to do? Uh, and then just a, a point to get people to actually watch them, we do really look at our thumbnails that we put on these and we want to use uh, the intriguing ones and uh, Ben was talking about this with one of our examples earlier and I've got a, a point here too. All right, so we're just gonna take a, a look here. This is a couple minute long video.
Today's project, replacing a starter. Not too bad of a project on our 01 Grand Cherokee, but before anybody tackles this project, you need to verify that the starter is the problem. We did that by going to our local Advanced Auto Parts store, where we tested the starting and charging system for free, and sure enough, the starter is the issue. Now, we've got the wheel removed for a little bit better visibility for you and a little bit easier access for us, but the first step in any starter work is always to disconnect the power. Now, with no current coming down to the starter solenoid, it's safe to go ahead and remove the wires. Step one, the wiring harness. Next, the positive lead. With the wires removed, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the bottom starter mounting bolt. This vehicle only has two starter mounting bolts, an upper and a lower. I like to leave the upper one in to last so that there's no chance that starter is going to fall down on top of me. Now, support the starter with your left hand. Go ahead and remove the upper bolt. I come up from the top to pull out the old starter. It's going to be easier than working down through the brackets underneath. Out with the old, in with the new. And finally, you want to follow the torque specs. In this case, 40 foot-pounds on the top and bottom bolts. Now we can reconnect the leads. And finally, before we button everything back up, it's a really good idea to go ahead and clean your battery terminals while you have all this available. That way you're going to be sure to transfer maximum current down to your new starter. And that helps it do its job much more effectively. And you see a nice typo here. <laughs> no, we did not just change an air filter. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Oh dear. <laughs> what do you do, right? And here's all of the legal. So again, I don't think that the legal department is too worried at Zappos about, uh, you know, tying your shoe the wrong way, although you could trip, I suppose. But here, if, uh, if we don't put the legal in to make sure that, you know, we're not responsible should you decide to do something wrong and actually blow up your car. Um, you know, it is important uh, to do that in my business. Might not be in yours. Um, all right, so uh, just a little bit about the thumbnail. So you can see here that um, uh, we've got in uh, the actual thumbnail, you see the hands on the battery. Uh, again, Ben referred to this a little bit earlier. In our case, we saw that when we actually have those hands on the part, we're actually getting a three to eight times greater click through than when we choose another kind of thumbnail like a headshot or just a wide shot. Um, so it's just something again that's giving the user that confidence that they actually can do the job and they see somebody else's hands in there. Um, uh, we also, uh, this fellow, Brian Gregory, is actually who um, scripts a lot of our videos for us and, and is the talent in them because he actually knows how to do these things. Um, and um, uh, in a couple of the videos, he, he used one of our products that we sell, which is uh, Mechanics Wear Gloves, but um, people like to see the greasy hands because they think that's actually what they're going to have, so it's true. Uh, Distribution-wise, we do distribute uh, both in a video gallery in the upper left there and also throughout social channels, um, YouTube, Facebook, uh, and we're starting to think about Instagram and see what we can get into 16 seconds. Certainly, we don't expect to do a whole how-to job, but if it's enough to bring somebody in, that'd be great. Um, and then the last piece here is just in the DIFM video. Uh, it's really about supporting our technology tools, providing training to the actual uh, mechanics. It's a new product for us, so we're going to have to see how that goes as, as actually selling video as opposed to producing um, for other consumers. But uh, it's yet to be found. Oh, and some numbers, sorry. So just in terms of plays, um, our customer training how-tos, like the one I just showed you, those do get played the most, um, even though they don't necessarily represent the largest uh, inventory that we have. And the contribution, though, is interesting, is pretty well spread. Um, this is contribution in terms of, of conversion and sales. Um, it's pretty even across the product-based how-tos. These uh, 
consumer-based or customer-based how-tos and then just our regular old product description videos. So um, it's still bringing people in, giving them the information they need, and converting. Okay? That's what I got. Thank you. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Chris Nagley. I am the training content narrator for GoPro. Uh, I've been there for about four years, which for GoPro that means I started right as we were coming out of a barn, literally, a uh, really small company. Has anybody you guys heard of GoPro? <laughs> I'm doing my job. All right, four years ago no one would have known. Um, so just a bit about the company. Um, obviously we are a consumer electronic manufacturer. We make uh, wearable, mountable, waterproof action sports cameras, which is terrific. Uh, they're great cameras, um, but another big portion of our business, even though it's not necessarily something that directly brings in revenue, is the content side of our business. Um, we really have changed the way that uh, a company can interact with their uh, consumers. Um, it's really kind of a two-way relationship with a lot of our end users. They're providing us content we always say that we have the world's largest marketing team, um, and you know that definitely is true. We have one user uploaded video every minute uploaded to YouTube that tags GoPro in their videos. Um, and that I think really shows the relationship that we've been able to get with our consumers. Um, not everyone is gonna necessarily tag Sony in their video that they happen to record with a Sony. Um, but with GoPro they do. Um, we have over six million fans on our Facebook page. Um, which, you know, say what you will about Facebook, but as a marketing tool, it's proven to be very, very effective. Uh, and that is, you know, getting people to upload videos all the time to our Facebook. They're being shared. We're sharing them as our video of the day or photo of the day. Um, and we're really kind of bringing people to the limelight. Um, the name of our product is a hero line of cameras, and that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to let everyone become their own hero whether it be to their mom or to 100 people on YouTube or a million people on YouTube. GoPro allows them to, to do that type of thing, uh, which is a, a big, big deal. <clears throat> um, in terms of training, which is really what my, my job is in, involved with, we have a four-phase training program. Um, phase one really centers around e-learning. Phase two is the online interaction. Uh, that's where Brand Live comes in for us. Um, doing a lot of uh, webinars with our, our various retail partners um, and eventually, you know, ideally, possibly consumer facing as well. Uh, phase three is the face-to-face -face interactions. That's where we're going to these retailers, interacting face-to-face, -face, um, giving them the information in person and going over the different types of, um, you know, camera information. Sometimes we're out there producing content with them. Uh, a lot of retailers will actually like to make their own tutorial or how-to videos that are focused around that retailer. Uh, they have their own kind of flair they like to put to it and we can be there to help support that. Um, and then finally the phase four is our pro elite level. Um, that's kind of an invite only uh, training level where we actually will bring people to us or we'll go to them and we'll put on you know camps type of thing where we'll do multi-day adventures out there using the product. Um, and all four of these phases very much have a place for how-to videos, tutorial videos, um, and all that good stuff. So we're utilizing them across the board, um, and it's proven to be a very, very, very important tool for us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a video really quick here. And uh, this is a tutorial video for one of our products that uh, we released a little while ago. The waterproof and shockproof wrist housing is one of the original mounts in the GoPro product line. Built for convenience, the flexible design allows you to wear a Hero 3 camera secured around your wrist to capture footage on the fly. Out of the box, the wrist housing includes a wrist strap, an adapter strap, a waterproof standard back door, a skeleton back door, and a backpack back door to use with the LCD touch and other backpack products. To wear your camera securely around your wrist, you can use the ring by latching the hook or use the adapter strap which provides a better fit when using ski gloves and jackets. 
To quickly pivot the camera upright, release the ring and flip the camera up. The wrist housing allows you to comfortably wear your GoPro camera when not filming and provides instant access when you're ready to capture that incredible life experience. For more info on GoPro products, visit gopro.com. So at first glance, I mean, a wrist housing, a wrist strap is not something particularly difficult to understand. You literally put it on your wrist, you tighten it down, that's all you need to do. But it can turn into a one minute video pretty quickly as you start to go into some of the things that are important in a video to make it more than just simply watching something and how it's utilized to get the most benefit out of it. Um, we always talk about training in general, but specifically tutorial videos having three main components. First and foremost, um, you need to have an emotional connection to the customer. Um, I really hope my CEO never hears me say this, but to be perfectly honest with you, I would argue that that video did not have an emotional connection. I wasn't a part of that video, by the way. Um, I would argue that video did not have an emotional connection. GoPro is an action sports company. Uh, it's high adrenaline. Um, even for our customers who aren't action sports oriented, they may be filming their kids first time riding a bike, you know, getting that look of terror in their face as they're riding around. It's exciting stuff. It's not a white background. Uh, someone talking about the product and how to do it. That has its place. Certainly, it looks better. Uh, it's easier to control the lighting. It's easier to make the video look good, um, which is certainly something that we are under a lot of pressure to do. Being a video camera company, we need to have good looking videos. Uh, but it doesn't have that emotional connection that a lot of times you're going to need. Uh, it does do a good job of explaining the features, uh, but I think that's really a secondary portion. I think first you need to explain the benefits. Uh, which this video sort of does an all right job of doing, but the features are great. Um, that's really nice. It can do all this. It does this. But what is the benefit to that? Why does that matter? Um, you know, the wrist strap, it attaches around your wrist. That's a feature. The benefit of that is that you have it quickly at hand to, you know, take a quick video, take a quick photo. It touches on that, but it really doesn't go too much in depth in terms of what the benefit of this product is. Um, and if you do have all three of those components, that's when you're going to be able to have a good understanding of, of the product. And for us, it's not really about selling the product. Um, that is definitely a secondary goal. Um, but really, if a customer has bought this product already, that's what the tutorial video is for, to help them get the most out of that product. Uh, with our camera, admittedly, it can be a little co complicated to some people. It's a pretty straightforward two-button control. And if someone doesn't understand it, they're going to put it in their drawer and never use it again. I gave one to my dad for Christmas. Not exactly a technically savvy guy. He's a pool cleaner. He put it on a pool sweep, ran it underwater, got a cool shot, and that was the last time he used it. Um, <laughs> it's pretty much a bookend now. Um, but still, he's used the camera. And the more he understands it, the more he can use it. That's going to help generate more content from our users to help our marketing team. And it's also going to ensure that the, the users are coming back to GoPro, coming back to our company, buying more product, um, and being an advocate for GoPro, which is really important to us. Thank you guys very much. All right. Do we have any questions right off the bat? OK, go ahead right here. I mean, I think it's definitely a pretty important uh, way to showcase the product. It makes the product look that much better. It pops against the white background. We just have a really small, well, now we have a little bit better setup, but we just have a little mobile unit where we can carry it around. It's big enough to put the product in and put your hands in it. And that's really all that we were utilizing for it. So it's not that difficult to get that type of, of lighting. And I think it plays a major role. Like I was saying, though, it may not be the sole uh, way to, to showcase the product. Exactly. Okay. And then the yeah, question. One, one quick thing on that. Actually, this setup right here, for example, is relative. I think it's collapsible, mobile, and you could get a shot that only has the white background. 
if that's what you're going for, or like we've talked about, if, if your audience wants to know more about your company, then maybe showing the cubicles and what your office environment like could work for you too. You just have to play it the right way. Right. Uh, two, is my mic on? Can you guys hear me? Wait. Okay. Um, two, just to speak to that, like like us using the white background, like that's just kind of built into like our site's user experience. But I mean, truthfully, like it wouldn't have mattered, in, in in my opinion, as long as the lighting's well and the shots are well, you know, like it wouldn't have mattered if she was showing you how to tie her shoes in front of a white background or on a couch somewhere, you know, or or in the office, you know, depending on the shots, um, you know, and and how well you can control that environment. Okay. And my second question is. making information videos, I feel like I'm going to get pushback of, well, if you tell people how to do it, they won't come to our place to do it. What, what would you guys say to that? You know, are we losing customers, because we're not selling an actual product, are we losing customers by teaching them how to do it themselves? So, um, would you, what would you say to I, that? I'd say no. Um, <laughs> Because, I mean, so we run into this because we sell to commercial customers as well as DIY customers. And our commercial customers sometimes say, well, you know, you're, you're showing them how to do it. And so we're showing a segment how to do it. That's really true. We're also showing people what it takes so that they value more what the DIFM knowledge is. Because, you know, sometimes they watch them and they go, you know what, thanks for showing me how to do it. but. I don't want to do that, or I can't do that, or I'm afraid to do that. Um, so I, I think that by sharing the knowledge, you're still helping them to understand what it's all about and helping them better position themselves as to how much they can or can't do. So I mean, in a service, you know, I mean, a, an agency, so maybe they'd feel comfortable writing the first round of copy for something but they're not going to feel comfortable being on camera or finalizing their whole presentation. I don't know, just as an example. And I think in reality, too, someone else is going to do it. You know, I mean, it, reality is someone else is going to be providing. If you don't show me how to do a starter, there's 10 other companies that are, that are doing this. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, you just have to, you have to provide the information. Yeah. Well, and I guess also, it, if you don't have confidence that people will come to you for services, then you're in the wrong yeah. So. yeah, I was going to say, um, your business is definitely based on selling your people. And if you don't put your people in front for a lot of people to meet all at the same time, then you're going to have a hard time selling your people. So at least sell a little bit and give them a taste of coming back for more or hiring you for more. Uh, you didn't explain what that was. Or yeah. How are you going about doing that? Yeah, you can, uh, Nick and Sam are over here. Uh, you can drop off your business card with them or stop by our booth and uh, drop your card there. And yes, you can either. Okay. Go ahead. Can you just draw anyone? Uh, it's at the, you have to go come to the closing reception, I think it is. A question for Nick. Uh, you said um, that Facebook was one of your main marketing tools. Mm -hmm. Um, I was intrigued by that because according to the Motley Fool a couple weeks ago, they said Coca-Cola was one of the number one uh, liked companies on Facebook, or the number one liked company on Facebook, um, yet Coca-Cola claimed that Facebook had added nothing to their, to Coca-Cola's revenue. Um, but here you are saying it's the most, like the most important thing to you guys, so I wonder what your thoughts on that were, how you use it differently than the number one liked company. Well, first of all, I forgot to mention it, but of those 6 million users we have, we have the top level rated in terms of actual user interaction. So it's really easy for someone to hit the like button on Facebook. For them to interact with that company, that's what's more difficult. And I think by the nature of our marketing and the nature of our product, we bring them back into our company. Um, we ask them to interact. They enjoy interacting. It's, you know, 
along with the chive, it's the place that they stop every day to check out a cool video. Um, and because of that, it makes a big difference in terms of the interactions that, that we're getting with those customers um, and therefore the return that we're seeing on it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but we have to cut it short. We have another session, I believe, coming in. Uh, I think I'll speak for everyone and say we can hang around a few more minutes and uh, feel free to ask questions. I know there's some space right outside this door. <laughs>